Well, this is different. The garage is completely empty, completely machineless. Rocking 42 degrees in the 3D Machines compound here. Just bringing some stuff out to the garage. Had this laying around inside. I got a race canister filled with kerosene. So we have fuel for the torpedo heater. As you probably saw there, actually, I don't know if I did show you this. The tank is now outside. So I think uh, people will be pleased with that. We drilled a nice hole through the wall here. Keep the pilot on because, you know, you got to keep the pilot on. We got heat there and we got the torpedo heater to get things up to speed and then that guy can maintain it. I do have to move a few things. I did fix this hinge for the C60. You guys saw that. I uh, cut and welded this. I think this is cast iron. So I welded it a little differently than I usually welded. I just put a lot more weld on it. And then I cut these. See it has these little rivets here. I cut that rivet and then just welded an end onto that. And so far it seems to be working pretty good. Now I just need springs for both sides. A little easier to move today. Only thing I know about this thing so far is actually I'm not even sure about the year. I have it on a receipt. I think it's, I want to say it's a 19. 84 Yamaha shaft driven 250 or 225 my apologies DX I do not think this has reverse which is unfortunate but I didn't make three wheelers too long and the first couple batches they didn't even put reverse on them so let's see how do we take that old school Yamaha seat off but I bought it because I was actually at the guy's house for a whole nother machine, which you guys will see that in the future. Hopefully in the very near future, because I want to get all three of these things going. And I actually have, I think, two other projects on top of that. So we're going to have some projects here. But you can see there's only some slight dings in the seat. I really liked that. Go ahead and set that off to the side there. We got how many flat tires? Two flat tires. This guy has just the sidewall is completely shot, but the tread's good, so I don't know if there's a tube in it now. It doesn't look like it. We'll stab a tube in that guy. This guy just looks soft, so hopefully that one will probably hold air, which is good. It's got a blue little portion here, and he painted it to match it, but I think I'll do the opposite. I'll clean the paint off of that and then paint that yellow. And that way we got something that's all together. But it's kind of funny. I have a funny story about this thing. When I first bought it, uh, we agreed to, I think he won 350 for it, and I got him down to 300. Well, after, looks like the boots off the carburetor there. Um, after I, I got him down to 300, I guess because I bought a second machine with it, I guess I, I gypped him out of 20 bucks. So he texts me when I'm about 10 minutes on the road. He's like, dude, you only gave me X and you said Y. And I'm like, dude, I counted it like twice. I'm pretty good at counting money. That was the one class in school that I kicked everybody's butt in. When it came to money, it came to keeping track of your you know, quarters, pennies, and dimes. That was one thing I was good at. That's funny that it just came off. So he's like, yeah, you... You gave me 20 less dollars, so I'm like, well, you know what, whatever, I didn't get a receipt from you, I'll come back, give you your 20 bucks, supposedly, and um, and I'll get a receipt from you. So he wrote me a receipt, I gave him the 20 bucks, and we were on our way. Alright, I think what I'm going to do here, you guys, is we're going to put air in this tire, see if it holds. It probably won't, but you can see our first issue here is this actually ground this right down to the plates which is not good because if this was just sitting back there it probably would not have happened but it did so no good no good flat tire see see what a flat tire can cost you it can cost you a brand new nice and that was even an interstate that wasn't even a never start son of a gun somehow i managed to get like eight psi in this tire and you can see it clears the battery now 
So it's it's unfortunate that you know just by doing that and opening that up, I don't think that was solely from me. I'm sure I benefited to that, but everything moves pretty well on this thing. The bearings feel really good. This is getting caught up right now. It likes to get caught like that. Um, but I think what we'll start is um, by taking this battery off, putting power to this, and uh, beginning our process. At this point in time, we know about the same amount of information. So we're just hitting this thing from what I'd usually do if I were to get something that was uh, in the similar circumstances. We're gonna keep these nuts and bolts even though they are old, you know, sometimes you need battery terminal nuts and bolts, so keep them. Rather have something than nothing. This battery is shot, though. There we go. Oh, okay, the bracket's messed up. That's what's going on. So if that bracket was bent up and welded, we didn't have that problem. How is that held on? Those three? Oh, I guess we gotta repair that. That's gonna come a little later on. I did pull this over, yeah. I do believe I pulled this over when I was purchasing it, and that feels very good, like, like brand new compression to me. For 225 cc's, that feels extremely well. It's extremely good. What do you guys think? Is the oil gonna be where we want it to be? Uh, it doesn't look too black. It's definitely dark, but there is oil in it. Compression feels good. It feels extremely good, to tell you the truth. So then we'll uh, check for spark real quick. Probably take this guy off just for giggles. It does, but the key is missing. I think there was a screwdriver in it. Let's see what we got. Is this too big? Am I breaking that or is it? Oh, I see. Oh, we got a neutral light. I can see that up on the dash. So that means, so yeah, that's on. Okay. You can see we're in neutral. Button right there. Off, run. Really? Well, it did go. Not sure if we popped a breaker or if there's not enough of oomph. Okay, let's turn off the oomph. Start. Don't have a good connection or we popped something. There we go. Great! So the electric start works. Now we can check to see if we have compression or compression spark. If compression's good. Why else would they park this machine? That's what you gotta start thinking of. I didn't even pay attention to which spark plug it was. So we're gonna grab them both. And you watch, it'll be one of those weird ones in between. It looks like the bigger guy, but it also doesn't look that big. Yeah, it's the weird one.
It's a Yama dog. I'm gonna go ahead and say it's got spark. I'm gonna tell Yamaha's back. The last three wheeler I had, the only three wheeler I have had, is a 1984 Honda Big Red 200. Sold that thing, I think, last, this this year, or last year. I think it was last year. So the Yamaha dog is gonna take its place. I need need to feel Yamaha power for a change. Let's see what we got. I can't see anything. Hopefully you guys can. Nothing. Come on, baby. And you're on. You're on run. Really? No spark. I just so happen to have the exact same plug, a brand new one too, sitting on the shelf. So hopefully, hopefully I can't, I'm not grounding this correctly, or at least I don't have a good ground. Or the spark looks bad. Ah, that's no fun. No spark. On the Hondas, granted I'm not sure if this is an 83 or an 84, but on the 84 of the Honda, you had one bolt. And they could take the whole gas tank off. This guy, you got two bolts and a rubber band back here. Slightly different. The Honda had Sparky, I'm a dog, don't. Who's winning? And the Honda had reverse. hooked up to that and if I'm not mistaken if I take that ground off and turn it over it it should spark if it's good and then if it's bad it won't spark because the oh here we go the wire that's coming off it's broken there's a wire that comes off of here that isn't good so here's the connector I found on the back side of the coil and here's the little tab that went on the end of the coil itself right there so we have some wire there and we got this here so we know exactly what you know needs to be hooked up here so I'll go ahead and cut that back and we'll put a new end on there and hopefully that's all it is looks like it's made by Mitsubishi here's the situation I got some shrink wrap and an end that should fit that I'm going to start by shrink wrapping that onto there. That's already crimped. And then I'll take uh, this guy and we'll put him on next. Guess we're not plugged in. Plug it in, plug it in. Love heat guns in the winter. Act as both a shrink wrapper and a heater. Gotta love the multi multitask. Okay, now this guy. Let's see. I cut this side so it's a little bit shorter. Stab that guy under there. And then stab this guy. In there yeah that'll bond very well when I was working on my apex uh, I actually twisted my hand and I caught the um, track assembly and it cut into my finger under my nail and I guess it got infected and then it took over half my finger and now it's finally uh, all that's dead skin now so hopefully uh, it'll grow back right but that's why my finger looks like that 
I didn't know that until after I was scrolling through my pictures and I took a bloody picture of my finger. And uh, I'm like, oh, so that's what happened. Hopefully this fixes it. Granted, the new ones are dirt cheap, which is cool. But at the same time, this is now, and that's a few days from now. So this is instantaneous satisfaction. I like that. Grab my spark plug, throw it in this guy, and then hopefully we don't even need the key anymore, aka the screwdriver. Up. Neutral light is on. Spark. Grounded. What do you think? Is that going to fix that? Hopefully that fixes that. Oh yeah. Spark for days. Brand new spark plug to a ready to rock and roll. Sweet. I use two stroke because I have been working on a lot of two strokes lately and this will just provide a little extra lubrication. Sweet! That's really all we need to hear. So that'll fire the throttle though. Check this out. So he had the boot off so I think he was trying to prime it for a good time to see if it would run but no spark is not going to get you anywhere. Even if you got fuel and air you know you need the three. So up here that's just there's no range of motion there i feel no cable movement it feels like it's bound right up so i don't know if that's something happening up in here or in the cable itself or in the carburetor so we're gonna have to take off the carburetor i'm not gonna do an oil change yet because i want to hear a little bit more fire reaction go on before we just change the oil i know we're gonna get this whole thing going and i know i'm going to change the oil but let's get to the, the big things. Oil changes are easy. Take out a bolt, let it drain. Take out a filter, let it drain. Put a new filter in, put the bolt in, put your new oil in. Come on, how, how hard is that? How you know intriguing is that? Wow, we got something messed up here. That is supposed to pull right out. And for whatever reason, wowzers. Yeah, that's interesting. Gotta love the, the two bolt carbs <laughs> with the, the rubber boot on the back. It's literally all you need to get a carburetor off. There's plenty of room to take them off. Old school technology, gotta love it. No fuel injection, no messing around with that stuff to see if that works. Clean this out, fire it back together. Start her up, buttercup. Those are off. Look at that. You can rest your stuff on the motor itself. Okay, now this is supposed to just come out of here. Why is that not? How is that stuck? Maybe somehow the idle screw is messing it up. Nope. What the heck is that? You can see it's right there I don't want to pry too hard I guess maybe hmm I guess I'll just tear the whole thing apart and maybe there's something silly going on with it I got my JIS screwdriver for this kind of stuff uh, I have a link to this stuff in my comment section and on my website if you go to the gear tab on my website at 3dmachines.co It'll just take you to my Amazon page that has like all my stuff. 
And then if uh, you just go on my gear section in the comment section of this video, it also has that same link. It'll take you to all the stuff that I use, whether it be in my house, in my garage, or anything like that. But these screwdrivers, these, these heads are slightly different than Phillips. And this screwdriver fits them way better than a Phillips. Jason turned me on to these, so they work good. <clears throat> See what's going on over here. I think there's gonna be fuel in it. If so, I'm gonna catch up my canister down here. Lobsters. What the heck, man? This thing just does not want to move like nothing. There we go. Okay. Holy smokes, look at that. Wow. Wow. That's the probably the worst carb I've ever seen. Holy smokes. Are we gonna be able to get it to run on this carb? The funny thing is is we literally could buy this carb for probably about $12 right now. But that's no fun. We got to see if we could revive it with my machinery. We also have, I can see there's some wire back in here. You guys probably won't be able to see it, but it looks like somebody went at it with uh, some ghetto rigging. Oh yeah, that feels nice and tight and no movement at all. Yeah, you know, I would be I would, I would be a lot of time ahead if I just went ahead and bought one of these things, but we'll put in the time for you guys. We got a 14 millimeter here, and we'll try to take this apart. Wow, that's even that is stuck. That is so weird. Like everything is just has a bunch of inappropriate language stuff in it. How does stuff stick like that? Holy smokes! Like literally, these two cables are seized into this carb. At this point, I have no option but just throw a whole bunch of lube everywhere and maybe something will free something up. This is the worst oil I've seen this year. This stuff is really black, really thick. This came out of a snowblower. But now, while I'm waiting on, while I'm waiting on my carb to unseize itself, or the WD to do its job, may as well drain the oil and just let that drain. Get two fluids all over the place instead of just one. I wonder if this is gonna take a different oil filter than I'm used to. Shouldn't be too complicated, right? Nice long one. Slight interference here. I think it'll still go.
I don't know if that's the gas smell or what that is, but that reeks if it's coming out of that oil. Wow, that's a silly design. I guess it's not too bad, but it's not necessarily the best. So we got a long screw, a medium screw, and a short screw. And then we need the extension. There you go. Oh, look at the look at how they used to do oil filters, man. That's interesting. Oh, the fleck, the specs on that thing. Hmm. I apologize for not pressure washing it. It's winter out. Oh. But Dalton, that's not an excuse. It, it is for me. <laughs> it is for me. Sweet. There's a spring on that with a little uh, filter piece and it's not filled with schmutz but oil is thick. I've let the WD-40 do its job for a few hours now and um, nope it's still seized. That one's still seized too so I'll take some of these jets out and see if it'll free something up. I have a feeling that I'm going to have to replace the carburetor, to tell you the truth, but like I said, I'll give it a go. I have an ultrasonic cleaner, so. All right, so that, you know, that's a part of this butterfly here with a slide, but yeah, still, holy smokes. Like we've given this uh, about 14 hours, still nothing. So what do I even do at this point? Do I just rip it out or do I let it sit a little longer? Wow. So this is going to conclude part one of the trashed three-wheeler series. I think we'll probably have another part. It'll probably be running uh, probably two or three days from now. And then we'll take it on its first ride and check it all out. I'm just really um, disappointed on how stuck this stuff is. So I'm just going to hit it with WD again, let it sit while the parts are on order. I ordered, uh, I did order a carburetor, I ordered a tube, a battery, I ordered, um, I think one more thing that I can't think of right now, but you guys probably know it's been a day since I filmed the first part. So, but yeah, this is also an 85. And the last thing I wanna, I wanna pitch you is my plug. Uh, right now at 3dmachines.co, uh, machineworks.com, we are running a special. If you spend 25 bucks before shipping, you will get a free beanie of $10 value for free. Uh, Merry Christmas. So we'll see you soon because I have more machines to fix. Until next time, 3D Machines and this seized carburetor out. Oh, gone.